Welcome back to the News at 10. Now, let's bring you a bit more perspective now on that story on the Kano State High Court issuing a restraining order against the State Assembly Ad Hoc Committee investigating allegations of bribery against Governor Abdullahi Ganduji. Let's see what transpired. Members of the Kano State Assembly Ad Hoc Committee investigating dollar bribery allegations against the state governor, as well as officials of the State Executive Council at the High Court premises. A group has filed a suit on behalf of Governor Abdullahi Ganduji, demanding that the committee to suspend any further investigation in a case that is already before a court of justice. We will respect the court order. Uh, we are going to respond to the matter before the court, and we did today, Monday, I mean Tuesday. However, this matter is before the court of competent jurisdiction, like you all know, and we ought not to be talking about uh, whatever the position or the outcome of today's case is. We need to keep quiet and respect the final verdict of the court. After arguments by the council, the presiding judge formally asked the committee to suspend any further investigation and maintain status quo pending hearing the motion on notice. Meanwhile, both the legislature and the executive branch of the government have agreed to take no further action as directed by the court. Today we told the court that we, we the advisably has considered to stay further action on this constitutional issues are resolved by the court. That is the simple thing. These people have raised constitutional issues that the assembly have no power to continue with the investigating the governor, and they have raised constitutional issues and they subjected it subjected it to the court's interpretation. So we have to wait until the court makes its final pronouncement, and that will determine the right of the parties whether to continue or not to continue. Governor Abdullahi Ganduji has recently come under scrutiny with the release of a video footage allegedly showing him collecting kickbacks from contractors. It's an allegation Mr. Ganduji denies. In a recent letter he sent to the State Assembly Committee, Idris Jubrin, Channel Star Virgin News. The former president, Chief Ulusia Ngobasanjo, has called for the strengthening of the local government as the third tier of government in Nigeria. Chief Obasanjo says the current practice has continued to hamper real development at the grassroots. He was speaking in Abe Okuta, the Ogun State Capital, while receiving members of the Friends of Democracy at his presidential library residence in the state capital. The former president maintained that people at the grassroots are better served if the local government is strengthened, and he says states that have not signed the local government alternative bill into law should do so in the interest of development. Local government is meant to be uh, local government autonomous from the state government. Uh, what has happened from what you have, the briefing I've heard from you, and what we know is that by design, state, most states have incapacitated the local government. They have virtually stolen their money to really call it what it is. They have virtually stolen the local government money. In what they call joint account, they were to contribute 10%, which they never contributed. And what has come from the state government have been uh, uh, appropriated by them. So what we have in most parts of the country is an, a local government that has function but cannot perform the function. The Chairman Senate Committee on Work, Senator Ibrahim Gaya, has described Governor, the Ogun State Governor Ibikule Amoso as a silent achiever who should be emulated by his contemporaries. Senator Gaya gave his commendation in Abe Okuta when he led his team on an oversight visit to some ongoing projects in Ogun State, including federal government-assisted projects. He also asked Governor Amoso to keep up the performance, even as his tenure is winding down. <laughs> The ongoing developmental efforts of the Ogun State Government continues to attract attention. This time, it's the Senate Committee on Works in Ogun State on an oversight visit led by its chairman, Senator Ibrahim Gaya. 
The first port of call is the governor's office in Okemoso, and Belkuta, the state capital, for a quick deliberation with the state governor, Ibikule Amosu, on the state of ongoing federal projects. We see the Lagos Ibada Road under construction. Lagos Shagamu, now Shagamu uh, to up to Ibadan. The construction is going on. It's heavy contract. It's one of the best roads in Nigeria because the traffic is high. We are putting over 45 centimeters of hardcore and asphalt. That's making like a runway so that this road can last for over 30, 40 years. Governor Amosu also wants the federal government to graciously refund monies spent by the state government on certain federal government projects. We need your help to, uh, to approve and assist us such that at least once it is captured that yes, they are winning us this, we will be running around to make sure that we eventually get the paid. After the court call, Governor Amosu leads the Senate team on an inspection of the ongoing projects in the state, including the city center, judges' quarters, and President Muhammad Buhari estate. It's an Asian town with old roads, difficult road to pass through before. And now the roads are two lane, five lane, ten lane. We're surprised. And all these roads we've gone through are all federal roads. The Bikule Amosu administration is winding down, but Governor Amosu says development in the Gateway State is certainly not. Let's take a look at some business news now. Here's Kayode Okikiolu. You first, first bank. Thanks, Ishama. You're welcome to Business News. Nigeria's Minister of Finance, Zina Bakmed, is leading a government delegation in London tomorrow for an investor roadshow. Bloomberg reports that Africa's largest economy is looking to float a fresh $2.8 billion euro bond in tenures of 7 and 12 years and a longer dated paper too. Citibank and Standard Chartered are financial advisors for the bond offering and have packaged the three-day roadshow scheduled to run till November the 14th. Nigerian officials met fund managers in September on a non-deal roadshow in New York to update bondholders on the country's growth plans. The House of Representatives approved the new Eurobond issue last month but advised the government to limit foreign borrowings and boost revenue. The Nigeria Communications Commission has approved the transfer of the country's fourth largest telecoms operator, that's Nine Mobile, to investment firm Teleology after several months of negotiations. A statement by the company says the decision followed a successful completion of the tenure of the former board appointed by the Central Bank of Nigeria in 2017 to oversee the affairs of a company pending the completion of regulatory due diligence of the bid documents submitted by Teleology and 16 others for its acquisition. The statement lists the telecoms firm's new board to include Nasiru Adobayo as its chairman, Asega Alega, Adrian Wood, and Mohammed Adewo as non-executive directors. Teleology emerged as the preferred bidder in February this year, following a bid process arranged by Barclays Africa after a debt default forced Etisalat out of the country. And elsewhere, Diamond Bank PLC has denied rumors in the media, stating that the commercial bank is in takeover discussions with Access Bank PLC. In a short press statement released on Monday by Diamond Bank's media relations unit, the lender says the bank is not in discussion with any financial institution at the moment on any form of merger or acquisition. Diamond Bank says the clarification becomes necessary in order to clear the rumor on the various media platforms. Moving on, OPEC and allies warn that surging oil output is poised to leave the crude market oversupplied in 2019 as growing global crude output swarms shaky demand. A committee of producer nations say a group of roughly two dozen oil exporting nations, including OPEC and Russia, may have to launch a fresh round of output cuts in order to keep the oil market balanced. 
The announcement comes as rise in supply and a weaker outlook for demand have contributed to a sharp pullback in oil prices. However, Saudi Arabia has announced plans to reduce oil supply to world markets by 0.5 million barrels per day come December. Let's head over to the stock exchange where fresh round of sell pressure has pushed the NSC All Share Index to a negative start for the week amid mixed sectoral performance and positive breath. Chimezi Obiwagu has an overview of today's stocks trading. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on Stock Market Report. The equities market started the new week on the downside as the All Share Index closed in the red by 0.18%. Our total volume of shares traded was about 142 million shares, with Diamond Bank contributing more to that volume. In terms of value, only about 1.6 billion naira was realized, and it's interesting to note that GT Bank has, for some time now, proved to be the most liquid stock in the market, as it represents represents an average of 80% of the total value traded per day. However, on the price movement chart, the bank was among the losers due to sell pressure on Monday. But then, Diamond Bank lost a whopping 9.38%. The bank today released a statement denying the rumor in the media that the bank is in acquisition discussions with Access Bank. The statement says, Diamond Bank is not in discussions with any financial institution at the moment on any form of merger or acquisition. Some traders say investors should expect a volatile movement on the market this week. And that was the stock market report. I'm Chimeze Obi Iwago. <laughs> Thank you, Chimeze. It's also a downbeat performance for major stock markets in the United States and across Europe following sell-off in tech stocks and rebound in oil prices. On the other hand, Asian markets ended earlier today in the green. Here are some of the closing figures for Monday. And that's business news for tonight. Thank you for watching. I am Kaya Diokikiolu. The news at 10 continues with Ijeoma. You first. First bank. A lot, Coyote. Still ahead on the news at 10, inaugural channel's under-17 track and field championship ends with remarkable performances in the sprints and relays. That's on sports. Just stay with us.